Hi, hello, how are you? Hi, Hent, hi, Humdum, hello, Miss, who is that, was that his name? Miss Hodgepodge, Miss Hodgepodge, hello, Melanie, Megan, Jennifer, Hend, Roy Hedges, hi, how are you? Put loads of comments in and that will help this live to go through to our table back, this live to go through to loads and loads of people. Uh, love you have a good day you are perfect oh thank you <laughs> oh, some lovely positive comments on here i'll keep on coming back if i'm um, if people want me here so that's awesome thank you thanks for joining me and um, i'm going to go through over some questions this is not a lesson this is a question session lessons are in the mornings question sessions are in the evenings and um sharing my course questions are in the afternoons as much as i can make that so um keep on sharing this live uh commenting um can you go through the motor studs on the motorway i get so confused i will be go i'll be doing those this week um and all my lessons and my revision sessions will be on my youtube account and you'll be able to look and see exactly when i did motorway studs so uh and when you've been through, when you watch that you'll find them super super easy but also everything is in this course everything you need to know is in this course um, but I don't want to go over them quickly because it won't work. Some people still won't understand. But yeah, like I say, that all that all my lives this week will be going into my YouTube channel. I'm fine. You can you can what's the word? Subscribe to my YouTube by clicking on this link that I've just pinned. We'll get straight on with some questions in a second. Hey, hey. So um, yeah, we'll get on to the questions. Won't be a second. You probably hear my. Uh, my dog, <laughs> well, it's not my dog, my mum's dog barking outside. Hi Tracy, Tracy how are you? Um, can you do the speed limit for each type of road and junction? Now, again, I will do speed, um, I'll cover speed tomorrow in my lesson. So if you can't watch tomorrow's lesson, go on to my YouTube channel tomorrow night and you'll see exactly when I've covered speed. Um, so I'll just, I'll just make a note that I'll cover speed tomorrow. Do you do any lessons? What do you mean do I do any lessons? Do you mean do I do driving lessons? Do I do theory lessons? Do I one-to-ones? What do you mean? Hey, Tracy, uh, good. I'm fine, thank you. Um, okay, so will these be on YouTube? Yeah, I'll put them all this week's. I'll put onto YouTube. Um, this morning's is on there already. My four o'clock session will go on to YouTube. Um, and this session will go on to YouTube this evening. You haven't revision for your theory in a few weeks time. You need help with the theory. This, this course, that's why I created this course. I'm here to help you. These live lessons, live revision sessions are here to help you. Uh, lesson every morning this week at nine o'clock. Um, if you need more help, then please sign up for this course. This course has been created over years and over thousands and thousands of hours, honestly, to help you to pass your theory test. It's got everything in it that you need. Anyway, let me tell you who I am, in case you don't know, then we'll get on with some questions. My name is my name is Annie Winterburn. Hello, thank you for uh, um, joining me. Get the course, it is so good, says Ian. Thank you, Ian, that is really, really kind of you. Uh, this is the course is here, it's pinned below, so just have a look at the pinned link um when do you start it whenever you want to start it it's all online so you'd start it whenever you were ready to start your driving lessons yay aaron did, are you enjoying them my name is annie winterburn i'm a driving instructor i've been a grade a driving instructor for about 10 years i do work as a driving instructor i do these uh, live lessons in between my working day for you to help you to pass your theory test. I'm also an audit trainer. That means I'm on the official register for driving instructor trainers and I'm a theory test expert. I have been doing theory lessons for years because I know so many people struggle to pass the theory test. So many people are failing again and again and again. Um, Come to our talent show today at nine o'clock. I don't know what that means. Um, so I, I started delivering theory test lessons and then I created theory test course to help you to pass your theory test. I put in it stuff like worksheets like this. You can fill it in while you're watching video tutorials, a few tutorials for every lesson. Fact list you can read or listen to. All the official DVSA questions. The most updated questions um, are in this course. I'm going to update my course 
tomorrow because we've had another update. So don't have to worry about it right now. They won't be changing this second. But but yeah, I'll, I'll add the new questions. The new theory test questions will be added to my course tomorrow because the DVSA sent them to me to, uh, over, over the weekend. Now it's question time. Has this live just started? It's just started. This is the first question coming on. So I can say I'm a driving instructor. I am here. Um, yes, Liam, it will update. It'll, be up, it'll update for you. So don't worry about it. I will make sure that I put the updates for every topic into the topic questions. But I'll tell you what the updates are. There'll be a specific section telling you what the updates are. But I've had a look at them. There's nothing... There's nothing um, Re just a couple of words difference that's all so nothing really that you extra that you need to know so don't worry i've had a look at them already okay so question time make sure you keep a note of how many questions you get right we'll do three sets of 10 questions this evening but more importantly hi bushy more importantly uh hi Fazal. write down the ones you get wrong so you can learn from them first question coming up bushy you've not missed anything uh, so, first question is, um, what I'll do is I'll read the question and answers, let you give, give you 20 seconds or so to answer the question, um, and then um, give you the answer, move on to the next question. Okay, is that all right? Cool. How would underinflated tyres affect your vehicle? The vehicle's stopping distance would increase. The flash rate of the vehicle indicators would increase. The vehicle's gear change mechanism would become stiff. The vehicle's headlights would aim high. So have a go. If you don't know, just have a go at it. This is all about um, a revision session to help you. OK, and the correct answer there is the vehicle's stopping distance would increase under inflated tyres. That means not enough uh, in your tyres. So your tyres are flat. Um, I can't read. You have dyslexia. Um, I I'm reading the questions out for you, so don't worry about it. Question two. When are you not allowed to sound your vehicle's horn? Between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. in a built up area. At any time in a built-up area, between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. in a built-up area, between 11.30 p.m. and 6 a.m. on any road. Keep putting up, you won't put your answers in. Loads and loads and loads of answers come in. And double tap the screen, give me some likes, that would be amazing as well. Cool. And the answer is, the answer is between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. in a built-up area. So if you can remember that it's in a built-up area and that there are times of the day, then that will help you to remember. Also, if you can remember possibly that it's nearly midnight, 11.30 p.m. or 7 in the morning when you're getting up to go to work. Just try and think of a way to remember those times. 11.30 p.m., nearly midnight, 7 a.m. when you set your alarm, possibly. Next question. What makes the vehicle in the picture environmentally friendly? It's powered by gravity. It's powered by diesel. It's powered by electricity. It's powered by unleaded petrol. <laughs> Nathan upsees, absolutely upsees. Yeah, it can be an automatic uh, movement that you do. Is was that Nathan? Yeah, uh, but don't do it. Don't do it. That would. And it's good you've done it now because now you'll know <laughs> not to do that again. Don't ever tell people to go. Nathan says in my lesson today, I put my hand up to say to say you can go upsees. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. It's dangerous. Awesome. So the right answer to this question is it's powered by electricity. Did you get it right? Give me a yes if you did or double tap the screen if you got that one right. Let me know. Good luck for tomorrow, Emma. Why have red routes been introduced in major cities? 
to raise the speed limits, to help the traffic flow, to provide better parking, to allow lorries to load more freely. Keep putting your answers in, some great answers coming in. Don't worry if you're, if you're thinking, oh, everybody knows and I don't know, don't worry about that. Um, people that know the answer are obviously um, and, and well on them, but very quick to put the answer in, which is great, but don't think, oh, I don't know, don't worry about it. Are these real questions? Of course they are. I wouldn't be doing this with unreal questions. Yes, they are. OK, so the answer to this is to help traffic flow. OK, so red route is when there's two red lines painted at the side of the road. You might not seen these because they're in major cities. Um, two red lines painted on the road means it's a red route. It means there's absolutely no stopping on that road. You're not allowed to stop on those roads. And that is because they want to help with traffic flow because it's really busy. That makes sense. Good luck, Shan, for the eighth. If you want to have a look at my course, get yourself test ready. I'll just pin it there to have a look at. If you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel and then then please um, click on this link as well. What's the purpose of road humps, chicanes and narrowings? Is it to separate lanes of traffic, to increase traffic speed, to allow pedestrians to cross or to reduce traffic speed? Lots of flowers going in there, very colourful. Road humps, chicanes, and narrowings. Thank you, Come Hesk. I can't read the rest of it. Hesk. Okay, and the answer is to reduce traffic speeds. Road humps are bump humps in the road. Um, chicanes and narrowings, where they deliberately make the road narrower, are all traffic calming measures and they're all there to make us drive slower <coughs> oh vera oh vera sorry vera vera that's awesome some of the questions on yesterday's live came up thank you yeah that's brilliant isn't it okay what's the purpose of a catalytic converter to reduce fuel consumption, to reduce the risk of fire, to reduce harmful exhaust gases, to reduce engine wear. So pop your, pop your answer in and make sure you double tap the screen, give me some likes just for being here and helping you. Third live of the day. Silly billies, nobody's a silly billy. You always get this wrong, one wrong. I do a lesson on catalytic converters to make it super easy for you to learn and get any question on catalytic converters correct. So follow me on, subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll see that um, at some point this week. Okay, so the answer is C, to reduce harmful exhaust gases. So a catalytic converter converts harmful gases into safe uh, gases, okay? So harmful gases go in, safer gases come out, they get converted. You passed a day, awesome. Congratulations. Explain in more detail. Now I can't do that now, Nathan, but I do it in my live lesson, live lessons every morning, and they'll all be on YouTube this week, so you can have a look at them. And the, all the explanations are in this course. This is a question session, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about anything. Cool. OK. Oh, when should tyre pressures be checked? Um, oh, not, not A. After travelling at high speed, when tyres are hot or when tyres are cold? Do you know the answer? I know. I know you just saw it. I pressed the wrong button, didn't I? Yeah, absolutely. When tyres are cold, that means before you've driven on them, OK, before you drive on them, when they heat up, when you drive on them. Um, so before you actually drive on them. It's D, you just seen it, upsies. <laughs> OK, I'm not letting you see the next one. I fold my arms. Uh, when will your vehicle use more fuel? 
when its tyres are underinflated, when its tyres are of different makes, when its tyres are overinflated, when its tyres are new, when will, when will your uh, vehicle use more fuel? Is it A, B, C or D? Emma, you passed. Congratulations, that's awesome to hear. Okay, so we've got some A's, C's and D's coming in. And the correct answer is A. When the tyres are underinflated, they haven't got enough air in them. They're flat. And if they're flat, it's, imagine pushing, um, imagine cycling, imagine riding a bike if the tyres are flat. It's going to be much harder to cycle. You're going to use a lot more energy. So if your tyres haven't got enough air in them, your car will use more energy to make it move, okay? More tyre touches the ground, says Nathan. Good explanation. There's more tyre, because they're flat, they're squished down, more tyre will touch the ground, more friction, more energy to move the car, more fuel to move the car. Thanks, Nathan. How should you dispose of a used vehicle battery, Fraser? How should you dispose of a used vehicle battery? Bury it in your garden, put it in the dustbin, take it to a local authority disposal site or leave it on waste land. There ain't enough air. Uh, are you criticising my accent again? Not enough air. Uh. Okay, so what's the answer to this question? A, B, C or D? You know it's not bury it in your garden. You know the answer. Take it to a local authority disposal site. That's a dump. Take it to a dump, okay? You're not going to bury it in the garden or anything else. Cool. Double tap the screen if you get that one right. Did you get that one right? How are you doing? Let me know. Are you getting all of them right? Are you getting a few wrong? Are you writing down the ones that you're getting wrong? Let me know. I'm good, thank you. Just about, that's good. Two wrong, okay, it's, so long as you learn for them. You got three wrong, so great, because now you know um, what you don't know and you can learn it, brilliant. Okay, what's most likely to increase fuel consumption? Make sure you understand what they're actually asking you here. Poor steering control, accelerating around bends, staying in high gears, harsh braking and accelerating. What's more, most likely to increase fuel consumption? So to make you use more fuel. Yeah, I can see people getting mixed up with C and D. And the correct answer there is D, harsh braking and accelerating. Um, so rather than harshly braking and accelerating, you should be looking well ahead and gently braking and gently accelerating. So you're driving is much smoother. Um, yeah, harsh braking and accelerating will, will use more fuel. Staying in high gears actually saves fuel, yeah. People are getting mixed up, aren't they? With It's the low gears. Staying in low gears would use more fuel, okay? Uh, because you're, you, there's more revving, okay? Staying in low gears would use more fuel. You can't book, there's nothing I can do about it. I can't help you with booking a test. I'm really sorry. I'm, I can't understand why you can't book in a different area because other people are booking. Um, but there's nothing I can do to help. Hi, Megan, how are you? Oh, that's 10 questions already. So how have you done? How have you done in those 10 questions? Let me know. Jessica, congratulations. You must be so happy. You got 10 out of 10, brilliant. You got two because you joined late, that's fine. You only did four, but you got three, okay, awesome. 
Finding ones that you've not got correct is, is not a bad thing because you're, um, you found something you don't know and you think, oh, I found something I don't know and now I can learn about that thing. Do you know what I mean? So let's see if anyone's got any questions for me. Um, we'll do another 10 questions in a moment. You've got your first ever theory test this Friday. This is EJP. Good luck um, for Friday, uh, EJP 2003. Where am I based for driving lessons? I'm based <laughs> I'm based in um, Knotsford and Northwich in, in Cheshire. Duke Quell says, teach now, please. Um, I will teach when I'm ready. I always teach when I'm ready. Is there a way to hide comments, please? Yeah, you swipe to the right. So swipe your screen to the right and that will hide the comments. Are they, are they off-putting for you? Um, yours is tomorrow. You failed last week, so I'm hoping you've done enough. Have you done something different to what you did last time? You failed last time by what did you do to prepare? Have you done something different to prepare this time? That's what you want to be thinking. Um, whatever you did to cause um, a result that wasn't good, do something different next time. So if you did got an app and you only did half of it, make sure next time you do all of it. If you did all of it, uh, if you answered every single question in an app and you still failed, make sure you read the books next time or ask your driving instructor to help next, next time or um, have a one-to-one -one with an instructor next time or sign up for my course for next time. Complete my course, not just sign up for it. Um, so do something different and, and doing something like a course will guarantee you've got everything you need to pass. Let me, let's get started with the next section, shall we? Can I do has a perception? This is not a lesson today. This is just going over questions. Um, so I'm not going over, no, I'm not going over any topics, guys. I'm just going through questions today. Um, lessons are in the mornings. Uh, kit to cat, thank you. So, and these lives are here to help you, aren't they? These lives, my lives in the mornings and the afternoons and the evenings, are all here to help you pass your theory test. Let me tell you who I am in case you don't know me and we get back to another 10 questions. My name is Annie. I'm a driving instructor. I've been a driving instructor for 10 years. Um, I'm also an instructor trainer. I'm on the official register for driving instructor trainers. I have a driving school that's based in Cheshire. I do teach um, as a driving instructor. I do do driving lessons. Um, but I'm also a theory test expert um, because so many people are struggling to pass a theory test. So I created Imogen, fantastic. I created Theory Test Course. The course has got worksheets, it's got video tutorials, it's got um, fact lists that you can listen to, it's got all the official questions, it's got case studies, then it's got techniques for anxiety, techniques for hazard perception, techniques for answering questions. It's got everything that you need to pass your theory test, to prepare to pass your theory test. This is the link for it there. The cost is $34.99, so only about the price of one single one hour driving lesson. That's all it is for the whole course. That gives you everything. It'll help you to pass your theory test. It'll help you to be a safer driver and make better driving decisions as well. Let's get back to a few questions. You're parked on the road at night. When must you use parking lights? When there are continuous white lines in the middle of the road. When the speed limit exceeds 30 miles per hour. When you're facing oncoming traffic. When you're near a bus stop. So pop your answers in there for me. I'll put the link in the comments there for you to have a look at the people that are asking. Okay, and the right answer is when the speed limit exceeds 30 miles per hour. You must use parking lights when you're on a road that is it's a 40 mile per hour road, okay, or, or 50 or higher. You must use um, parking lights. What restrictions apply if you're towing a trailer on a three lane motorway? You mustn't exceed 50 miles per hour. You mustn't overtake. 
you must have a stabiliser fitted or you mustn't use the right hand lane. Now I'm going to leave it 20 seconds for you to answer you. Put your answers in. And no, I won't go any quicker. I'll go at, uh, um, at the pace of 564 people, not just one person. course a lot of d's and some people are saying a and some people are saying b but the answer is d do you get that one right let me know double tap the screen if you got it right the answer is d if you're towing a trailer on a motorway you must not use the right hand lane if you're towing a trailer on a motorway what is this, what is the fastest you're allowed to drive What's the fastest you're allowed to drive if you're towing a trailer on a three lane? It's 60, absolutely. And then the speed limit on a motorway is 70, but you're only allowed to drive 60, 10 miles per hour less. So you're not allowed to use lane three. It's also be too fast if you're towing a trailer. Cool. What should you do if you're towing a trailer and it starts to swing from side to side? Ease off the accelerator and reduce your speed. Let go of the steering wheel and let it correct itself. Brake hard and hold the pedal down. Accelerate until it stabilizes. Is A, B, C or D? I'll pin the course there for you to have a look at. I'll let you know more about it in a minute. So is the answer A, B, C or D? And the answer there is A, ease off the accelerator to reduce your speed. If the caravan, if you're towing a trailer or a caravan and it starts to swing from side to side, that means if it starts to do that, okay? Swinging from side to side, okay? Ease off the accelerator, your speed will gradually reduce and your car caravan will gradually, or your trailer will gradually settle down, hopefully. Okay, that's what you need to be doing. Does that make sense? Awesome. Okay, when would you increase the pressure in your tyres so they're above the normal limit, normal value, when the roads are slippery, when the vehicle is fitted with anti-lock brakes? when your tyre tread is worn below two millimetres, when carrying a heavy load. The course, if you want to have a look at the course, find out more, you can click on that link to find out more. So what's the right answer there? Is it A, B, C or D? And the answer there is D, when carrying a heavy load. Um, answers that question, Boshi, um, they'd have to have a look and see what it's got for them and how much help it can give them. Um, you, but but it, it could do, but they've got to decide for themselves. Okay, so next question. How will a heavy load on your roof rack affect your vehicle's handling. It will improve the road holding. It will reduce the stopping distance. It will make the steering lighter. It will reduce stability. Bushy, they can always email me. You know the email address. Um, they can always email me and I can say, this is what it's got. You've got to decide for yourself. <laughs> okay, what is the correct answer here? How will a heavy load on your roof rack affect your vehicle's handling? And the correct answer there, it will reduce stability. The, the stability will be less, it will reduce it, it won't, um, it won't be as stable. If you're struggling to pass theory tests, stop doing, stop doing mock tests, 
Stop doing mock tests until you've done more learning. If you go to school, if you go to college, if you go to university, you don't do mock tests until you've done the learning. So do the learning um, through this, through my course or through a book or through a one-to-one -one with an instructor and then do mock tests. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, next question. What would be affected if you're carrying a heavy load on your vehicle? The vehicle's gearbox, the vehicle's ventilation, the vehicle's handling or the vehicle's battery. What's the right answer there? And the correct answer there is the vehicle's handling. Um, I am going to, um, this, this is, uh, thanks for pointing it out. Um, this is a safe place for people to learn. And people are just making silly comments, but you know, oh, anybody who has to learn it um, doesn't deserve to take a test. That's a really silly thing to say, isn't it? Of course, people have to learn it. You know, just nobody's born knowing this stuff, are they? So we all have to learn it. Um, are these real questions? Yes, they are. When are you doing online lesson sessions? In the mornings, nine at nine o'clock. Who's responsible for making sure a vehicle isn't overloaded? Thank you, Miss J Darcy, for that rose. Uh, is it the driver of the vehicle, the owner of the items being carried, the person who loaded the vehicle or the licensing authority? What's the correct answer here? What do you think it would be? If you're not sure, just what do you think it would be? Who's responsible for making sure there's not too much, your car isn't carrying too much, it's not overloaded? Yay, awesome. Keep putting your answers in. Hey Alfie, how are you? Thanks for joining me. Okay, so the person responsible is the driver of the vehicle. The person driving the vehicle is responsible for making sure that the vehicle isn't carrying too much on it. That makes sense really, doesn't it? Okay, so you're planning to tow a caravan. What will help the handling of the combination? A jockey wheel fitted to the tow bar, power steering fitted to the towing vehicle, anti-lock brakes fitted to the towing vehicle, a stabiliser fitted to the tow bar. Is it A, B, C or D? And lots of people do get mixed up with this one. So don't worry if you do get mixed up with this one. I'll do a lesson that helps you all about this. Okay, and the correct answer is a stabiliser fitted to the tow bar. A stabiliser helps keep the car and the caravan more stable. Uh, you get confused, well, watch out for my lesson where I cover this question in detail and I'll tell you all about it. Okay, so are passengers allowed to ride in a caravan that's been towed? Yes, if they're over 14. No, not at any time. Only if all the seats in the towing vehicle are full. Only if a stabiliser is fitted. Here's the link to my course. You can have a look at it. It's $34.99. Have a look at the link there to tell you all about it. You can also click on that link if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So I've got some C's and some B's coming in. What When you... Uh, thank you, Gucci. Nice to see you again. Thank, um, think about this. Think about what is the safest and most sensible option here. What's the safest and most sensible thing? And it, it absolutely, no, not at any time, brilliant. Not at any time are people allowed to travel in a caravan if the caravan's been towed. 
what safety device must be fitted to a trailer braking system? I think sometimes when you're answering questions, when other people are answering questions, you don't know um, what what maybe what country they're from you don't know what the rules are in their country so we wouldn't like to go to a different country try and take a test and because our rules are different to theirs people laughing at us okay so just keep it kind keep it nice some people might have learning difficulties some people might just click the wrong question by mistake some people might be from different countries there's all kinds of reasons why people think um, feel that the answer is different they may be overthinking um, and like I say I wouldn't want to go to a different country and people were laughing at me because the rules are different in our country so let's keep it really really kind and really really positive okay otherwise people are going to be scared to put the answer in and that's not what we want and you're sorry that's fine thank you so much for that that's really that's really um, that's really um, kind of you to do that thank you but it's not only to you Okay, so what safety device must be fitted to a trailer braking system, stabiliser, jockey wheel, corner steadies or breakaway cables? Which one of those is it? A, B, C or D? Yeah, people always get mixed up with this one, so don't worry about it if you do. The answer is a breakaway cable. A stabiliser will keep these two more stable. It's a good thing to have, but you don't have to have it. A breakaway cable is in case they break away from each other by mistake, and you have to have that, okay? Does that make sense? Because if they break away from each other, the caravan could roll down the hill and kill people, okay? So you have to have a breakaway cable in case they break away from each other. A stabiliser will keep them more stable. You don't have to have one. It's just good to have one. Does that make sense? Let me know if that makes, double tap the screen guys, if that makes sense. That's a very, very quick explanation for my lesson all about this, but it makes sense. I think, I think it does, but you let me know. You have to tell me it does. So just think, um, if they break away from each other, oh my goodness, how dangerous is that? When you're on a hill and that caravan can keep going and going and going. A Raisa, I've just explained that. I'll explain it again. People are getting mixed up with a stabiliser and a breakaway cable. A stabiliser keeps these two more stable, okay? It's good to have, but you don't have to have it. A breakaway cable is in case by an accident these two break away from each other. It's not fitted properly and they break away from each other. If they break away from each other, the caravan could roll down the hill. It could kill people. So if you have a breakaway cable that will stop the caravan from, from rolling away, okay, it puts the caravan's brakes on. And you have to have one of those for safety. Stabiliser, good to have. Breakaway cable, you have to have it. What's going on, guys? What's going on? Let's stay kind and positive. Do I go live every day, every weekday, yeah, and sometimes at weekends as well. How many did you get? That's another 10 questions um, I've just covered. How many have you got? How many did you get right? All of them? Two wrong. Do you know what they were? Did you write them down? Did you learn from them? Four out of four selector, 100%, seven, eight. It is great if you get them all right. That's really, really good. Um, but if you got some wrong, that's good as well because you can learn. You found a question you didn't know, you didn't understand. Um, all of them right, one wrong, Emma, awesome. Two wrong, all 10, brilliant. Good luck, Sophie Glover, for tomorrow. Practice makes perfect. Yeah, you've just got to, practice does make perfect. Practice also makes consistent. So just be careful. Just be really, really careful of what you are practicing. Making sure you're practicing some um, some good stuff. But yes, Seleka, you, you, you're, not, you're not wrong. One wrong young AKA. Do you know what it was? Bushy always gets a mic. I know, Bushy works incredibly hard. Okay, anybody got any questions for me? I'll just pin my link there. Um, let me just tell you, I'll tell you in a second what it's got in it, but you have a look at the link. All wrong. You got them all wrong. I bet you didn't get them all wrong. How long is the theory test? 57 minutes for 50 questions. 
how do I make the information stay in my brain? I'm 42. Okay, that's a that's a really, really good question, actually. Um, what a lot of people do, I don't know what you're doing, but you'll have to tell me. What a lot of people do is they get an app and the app has all the questions and all the answers in it, all the practice questions and practice answers. Um, and then they try and memorise those questions and answers and the information does not stay in your head when you do it like that. If you learn the, uh, learn about the topic, then the information will stay in your head and it doesn't matter how the question is asked of you, you'll know it. You know, 42, you know so much stuff, don't you? And it's because you've learnt it, not, not because you've seen a question and seen some answers and tried to memorise the answer. And that's why I created this course. Um, and that's why this with this course, you don't think about memorising, you just learn it, okay? Now, I've just told you, I've explained to you what a stabiliser is. So a stabiliser keeps these two more stable, just like stabilisers on a child's bike, keeps the bike and the child stable. Stabilisers, a stabiliser is a metal bar that goes here and it keeps these two more stable. Now you'll always remember that and that's how, that's, um, that's how it, it's much better to learn before you go through um, questions and answers, okay? Stabiliser keeps them stable. A breakaway cable is in case they break away from each other and the brakes will come on on the caravan. Brakes, breakaway, brakes. It's easy to remember if somebody teaches you. That's how your information will stay in your head, not necessarily by looking at questions and answers. That's why 53% of people are failing because that's what they're doing. That's why I'm here to make theory easy and to teach you some stuff. But tonight it's essentially about going over some questions. Uh, and I'm getting into teaching mode. I need to stop. Let me click my link there for you. Put on the, click on that link if you want to subscribe to if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click on that link if you want to. Thank you, it's Franz, if you want to sign up for my course. My name is Annie Winterburn. I'm a driving instructor. At Knallam, how do I say that? Congratulations, that's awesome to hear. I'm a driving instructor, I'm a working driving instructor. I do work as a driving instructor. Um, I do my lessons in the morning, I go out to do my less, uh, uh, my theory lesson in the morning, I go out to do driving lessons, I come back and do another theory lesson, I do some office work and I do another theory lesson for you guys. Um, road signs, I did road signs this afternoon, I'll do more tomorrow afternoon. I do road signs again tomorrow afternoon, four o'clock. I'm also an instructor trainer. I train people to become driving instructors. Thank you, Lizzie Mag. And um, I'm, a, I'm on the audit register of trainers. I'm also a theory test expert. I, um, <laughs> I, um, I'm making me laugh what you're saying. Okay, I'm a theory test expert. I want to help you to pass your theory test. So many people were telling me the struggle and I know I can help. I know I've got the, the um, the sort of skills, qualifications to help you and I decided that's what I wanted to do because I hated to hear people say, I've given up on driving altogether because I can't pass, when I knew they could pass with just a little bit of input from me. And that's why I created this course um, so you go through this course and you are 100% prepared to pass. It's got worksheets, tutorials, fact lists, um, of all the official DVSA questions and loads more to help you to pass. I love you too. You do your theory th March the 31st. Keep following these lines. Keep going through what you're going through to, re to revise. But if you want to um, have a step-by-step -step process, this is my, this is my, this course will help you. If you failed it a few times, this course is for you. I promise you it gives you everything you need. It's taken me years. It's taken me thousands of hours to put it together and it will help you um, to pass, to be 100% prepared to pass. Let's go through some more questions. That's what tonight's all about, going through some, some questions. This is my final set of 10 questions. So, number one, <laughs> Renee, thank you. When may you overtake another vehicle on the left? Do I like driving? Do you know what? I love driving. 
I love driving. Right from being very, very young, 12 or something, when I could learn to drive off-road with my dad. I just love it. Um, anyway, um, I, I like teaching more though, to be honest with you. When you may you overtake another vehicle on the left, when you're on a one-way street, when you're approaching a motorway slip road, will you be turning off? When the vehicle in front is signaling to turn left, when a slower vehicle is traveling in the right-hand lane of a dual carriageway. Is A, B, C or D? So pop your answer in. Okay, and the right answer. Got loads and loads of answers to come in, guys. Put loads of answers in. Um, don't worry about getting it wrong. This is a learning session. Thanks for the likes. You can't see the full question. Why is that? Um, why can't is is the, this advert um, in front of your screen? If it is, swipe to the right and it will disappear. Okay, so the right answer is when you're on a one-way street. Rodina, is that? Um, hi, Liam. When you're in a one-way street, you'll have you've got two lanes of traffic, maybe two maybe two lanes of traffic. Okay, and you're allowed to both overtake each other. Be really really careful. But you don't, you're in a one-way street, you're allowed to both overtake each other, okay? Does that make sense? When you're on a, approaching a motorway slip road where you'll be turning off, you're not allowed to go faster than the car in the, in the, in the, um, in lane two. That could be really, really dangerous. They don't expect you to be overtaking them and they think, oh my gosh, this is my exit. I better get into the left-hand lane, straight into you. At speed, that's going to cause an incredibly um, horrible accident. Um, so it's when you're on a one-way street, undertake, people call it undertaking. It's actually overtaking on the left, but people do call it undertaking. Yeah, you, you're right. Um, you're traveling in very heavy rain. How is this likely to affect your overall stopping distance? There's nothing in front of the screen, Annie. Okay, so those adverts have gone. Completely. Thanks, Marie. I didn't realise that. Um, they're on my screen, annoyingly. <laughs> OK, but not for you. OK, so you're travelling in very heavy rain. How is this likely to affect your overall stopping distance? It will be doubled. It will be halved. It will be 10 times greater. It will be no difference. So pop your answers in. I'll give you about 10 more, 15 more seconds. Don't worry about getting it wrong, just have a go at it. Okay, the answer is it will be doubled. Okay, so if you're driving on dry roads, you need two seconds between you and the car in front of you. Game old will, yay! If you're driving on dry roads, you need two seconds between your car and the car in front of you. In On wet roads, it's doubled to four seconds. On icy roads, it's 10 times the gap. 10 times the gap is 20 seconds. So just remember that. And a good way of remembering stuff is to go and tell somebody. Dry roads, it's two seconds. Um, wet roads, doubled to four seconds. Icy roads, 10 seconds times the gap which is 20 seconds tell at the end of this live go and tell that to somebody even if it's your dog or your cat or your budgie go and tell somebody say the words out loud that helps them go into your uh, head isn't your stopping distance a distance rather than a time no not anymore not anymore it's it's um it's, it's it's a time two seconds four seconds it's not it's not distances anymore sessie Good question. Okay, next question. What should you do when you're overtaking at night? Wait until a bend so you can see oncoming headlights. Sound your horn twice before moving out. Out. <laughs> Go past slowly so that you can react to unseen hazards. Beware of bends in the road ahead. Just think about all those answers and think what's the safest and most sensible thing to do safest and most sensible is going to be the correct answer isn't it just have a think about it is waiting until a bend safe and sensible is sounding your horn safe 
and sensible is going past slowly, safe and sensible, is being aware of Ben's safe and sensible. Which one is it? And the answer is definitely beware of Ben's in the road ahead. Going past slowly is definitely not what you want to do, okay? So have a think about that. Lots of people said, see, go past slowly. Do not go past slowly. If you're overtaking, you need to get past them and back to your side of the road as soon as you can without breaking the speed limit. As soon as you can. Travelling on the wrong side of the road is extremely dangerous. Overtaking is extremely, extremely potentially dangerous. OK, and overtaking slowly sounds like a really bad idea, Ceci. It does. Um, so don't worry if that's what you put down. I know you're trying to think about safe, sensible options, um, but I'm just explaining to you why that's not a safe, sensible option. OK, so don't worry if you got that one wrong. Just think, oh, yeah, of course. Of course, you don't want to go to the right hand side of the road and overtake really slowly. OK, you don't want to do that. You want to get past and get back to your side. Does that make sense? Hi, you not you don't worry about being late. A few more questions to go yet. Let me know if that little explanation makes sense because I don't want lots and lots of people thinking that overtaking slowly is a good idea. Yes, Jordan, very, very similar. These are the DVSA official practice questions that I'm going through right now and they're all in my course. When you do your theory, you get hungry or sleepy. Selfie queen, when you do your theory, um, have, have a biscuit or some kind of snack before you start. Give yourself a bit of a boost and then do it for 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes only, and then stop. Okay, 10 or 15 minutes and then stop. Theory test questions based on the new highway code will not be changed for a few months yet, later in the year. The theory test questions based on the new highway code will be later this year. It's not going to be straight away. The, DV the DVSA have now been in touch with me as I knew they would and they've told me um, in an email this weekend those questions will be later this year. So yeah, so as it Selfie Queen has said that question, um, you get tired, you get hungry, 10 minutes, stop. Later on in the day, another 10 minutes and stop. Even if you're still motivated, stop. That's the way we keep ourselves motivated to go back and do another revision session later on in the day. So three sets of 10 minutes would be great. When may you, when may you wait in a box junction? I do do practical lessons. Yes, I'm a driving instructor. Yeah, I do. When you're stationary in a queue of traffic, when you're when approaching a pelican crossing, when approaching a zebra crossing, when oncoming traffic prevents you from turning right, when may you wait in a box junction? I covered this this morning in my theory lesson. Do you want me for a practical lesson? Do you live near Nutsford or Northwich? And if you do, just Google spot on driving and get in touch that way. Yeah, you can wait in a box junction when you're waiting for oncoming traffic. So there's traffic coming towards you. Wait for it all to get past and then you can turn into your road. If the road you want to go into is blocked, if there's a traffic jam, don't wait in the box junction. Wait behind the, the lines. Does that make sense? Next question. Which plate may appear with this road sign? Humps for half a mile, hump bridge, low bridge or soft verge? You know the answer to this one, don't you? What plate may appear, which plate may appear, appear with this road sign? <laughs> okay. I'm not talking about driving lessons right now. Um, sorry. If you live near me and you want to drive a lesson, please just email me. This is this is this is theory for people all over the country. My driving school is for people just who live right near me. So I don't want to talk about it here. I don't know what you whether you want automatic, whether you want manual. I don't know where you live. Okay, cool. So the plate that will appear with this sign is humps for half a mile. Does that make sense? But 
sorry please email me if you do want don't say sorry please i'm trying i'm trying to be quick for other people um so it's not to irritate other people i'm not meaning to um be blunt with you if that's what came across please email me um and we'll talk about like lessons if you live near me does that make sense okay so humps for half mile that road that sign is telling you there's humps in the road okay that sign is telling you there's humps um so it, it's not telling you there's a bridge it's not telling you there's a hump bridge or a low bridge. It's not telling you there's a soft verge. It's telling you there's humps, okay? Um, so that might say humps for half a mile with that sign. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I hope it does. What's the reason for traffic calming measures? Now, humps in the road are a traffic calming measure. What is the reason for traffic calming measures? A, to stop road rage. B, to make overtaking easier. C, to slow traffic down. Or D, to make parking easier. Why are the traffic calming measures like road humps? You know the answer. Think about the The, the answer's in the title, isn't it? Traffic calming measures. You know the answer, don't you? You know it. Awesome. Yeah, it's to slow traffic down, isn't it? Traffic calming measures are there to slow traffic down. Fantastic answers, guys. Well done. David, good luck for tomorrow at 11. I'll be live at nine if you want to join me for a few minutes. Um, so what colour are the reflective studs on the left hand edge of the motorway? Jordan, if your test is on Friday, I don't, I can't, I can't advise that really. I don't know how much time you've got in the day. I don't know how well you can concentrate. I don't know what issues you've got or what issues you've not got. How, how, um, if you, if you have any learning difficulties, if you don't, if you, I don't know you, um, just do as, if your test is Friday, do as much as you can. <laughs> That's what you need to do as much as you can. You've left it quite late, but you can still do it. You can still do it for certain. Okay. So, um, I, but I can't tell you how many, how much to do. Sorry. Okay, so the colour of reflective studs between the left hand edge of a motorway. And the answer is A, B, C, or D. I've got some C's and B's coming in. What do you think it is? And some A's. Okay, the right answer there is red. The studs along the left hand side are red. This is all in my course. Um, covering the colours of the motorway studs. But I'll give you a clue, shall I? Shall I give you a clue how to know, how to know every single time that they are red? Sophie knows it, Sophie's seen it before. I'll just go over the red ones with you right now though. Okay, so, the left-hand edge of the motorway. What is next to the left-hand edge of the motorway? What's the extra lane you go into if you're breaking down on a motorway? What's it called? The, the lane you go into if you're breaking down on a motorway, what's it called? It's called the hard shoulder. So you've got the left hand edge of the motorway and then you've got the hard shoulder. And that's a lane to go into if you're breaking down, okay? So if you're breaking down and you have to go onto the hard shoulder, you're going to stop and wait for help, aren't you? Does that make sense? You go into the hard shoulder if you need to stop and wait for help. Red traffic lights means stop and wait. Red studs are next to the hard shoulder where you go if you need to stop and wait. Red means stop and wait. That is part of my traffic light technique to help you to remember. Normally I use slides and stuff to help you remember more. Does that make sense? Will you remember the colour where the red studs are always now? Will you always remember? Tell me you will. Just put some yeses in the comments if you'll always remember that red studs are next to the hard shoulder. You go to the hard shoulder to stop and wait. Red means stop and wait. And the, the left hand, yeah, awesome, fantastic. I, you always get it wrong. Well, not anymore. Stop, t stop telling yourself you get it wrong. So hail, so hail. Tell yourself now. Now I know where the red studs are. Now I know where they are, because you go on the hard shoulder to stop and wait. 
Red traffic light means stop and wait. So red is next to the hard shoulder. You know that now. Thank you, Barnet. Is that Barnet? Okay, so what's a rumble device designed to do? Look at these yellow strips going all the way across the road. Bright yellow, bumpy strips. You said red are next to the hard shoulder. Yes, they are. What are these rumble device designed to do? Give directions, prevent cattle escaping, alert you to low tyre pressure or alert you to a hazard. What are the designs? Put A, B, C or D in for me. Loads of great answers. If you don't know the answer, just have a guess at it. Have a try. It's shiny, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the right answer is D. So well done if you got it right. Don't worry if you didn't get it right. Now you know. These yellow strips are bright yellow, so you can see them really easily. These yellow strips are thick. They're thick, so as your tyres drive into them, you're going to be going bump, 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 bump. So you can feel yourself driving over them and you can see them really easily. Now, they're going to be there when you've been driving quite fast and that you need to slow down for something like a roundabout, okay? So something like a really busy roundabout is coming up and they need to say, slow down here. So they're alerting you to a hazard. Thank, uh, congratulations, Emandalu too. That's awesome news, okay? Does that make sense? Let me know if that makes sense. Who's a disaster? No, you're not. Everybody can learn. Everybody can learn. Uh, I've been in the car and went over this before, Annie. Did you feel the bumps? It's called a rumble device. You feel the car rumbling over them. It makes sense, Annemic girl. Awesome, brilliant. That's what I want. Fab. Easy when you know, isn't it? He did feel it going over the bushy, yeah. And if you're the driver, you would see them as well. More paint, more danger, more hazards. Cool. What should you do if you have to make a journey in foggy conditions? Follow other vehicles' tail lights closely. Avoid using dipped headlights. Leave plenty of time for your journey. Keep two seconds behind the vehicle ahead. So you've got to drive and it's foggy. What should you do? There's the course there. I pinned it for you. If you have failed, this course will help you to pass your test next time. So have a look at it. They're pinned for you. So what should you do if you have to drive in the fog? What do you want to contact me for? Most people can't contact me. Um, what do you want to contact me for, NGNG197? Let me know. Unless it's for driving lessons, I'm not really contactable directly. Okay, and the right answer there, of course, is leave plenty of time for your journey. Cool. Next question. What must you do when you're overtaking a car at night? Flash your headlights before overtaking. Select a higher gear. Switch your headlights to main beam before overtaking. Make sure you don't dazzle other road users. ADI, oh, ADI practice, okay, yes, of course. Um, how can you, you go, to my, um, go to my bio and email me. ADI practice, sorry, yeah, of course you can. What's the right answer here? A, B, C or D? And the right answer is D. Um, ADI practice, if you can't do that, get in touch with me, go to this website here and tell them you need to speak to me. And they'll put, they will put you on to me straight away. Okay, that's another 10 questions. So make sure you don't dazzle other road users is the right answer there. 
that's obviously if you if you can't dazzle people because they won't be able to see properly d is the safest nathan kane absolutely you got it right the the domosuki how is that d how make sure you don't dazzle them because if you are if, if you're on driving at night you'll have your main beam headlights on and make sure that you put them off so if you're overtaking somebody um put them off at the appropriate time and then you won't be dazzling people okay that's how so how many did you get right out of those last 10 you got nine actually good nine is a really really good score eight is a really good score do you know which ones you didn't get right if you need more help then please this course will give you a step-by-step -step help this is a topic that you didn't really get you didn't really understand then maybe you want to go to my course you could read a book all about this topic one of the official theory test books you could ask your driving instructor about this topic there's lots of ways you can learn about this topic um, but now you know if you didn't get them a lot of them right now you know that um now you know that you need a bit of help on this topic. You got all 10 right, you got three right. Like I say, this course will help you. Um, on the actual theory test, there are 50 questions. You need to get 43 of them correct. Is this course for theories and hazard perception or just hazards? This course is, okay, so theory test course is for the theory test for the multiple choice questions and for the hazard perceptions. For the, so for the whole of the theory test, there's worksheets in it, the video tutorials in it, there's facts lists, there's all the official theory test questions, there's case studies, anxiety techniques, techniques for doing hazard perception, techniques for answering questions and games. And if you sign up while I'm live, uh, using this link if you sign up using this link you get a hazard perception course a whole course on hazard perception uh, um, and, and, um, a hypnosis course you get those two things for free and two free ebooks so you will be 100% prepared to pass when you go all the way through it I'll show you what's in it um, have a look at what's in the course is this every night um, yeah this is every night at half past six this week if I can make it, if we can get back in time for my driving lessons, I will come on at half past six every night. Let me show you what's in Theory Test Course and how you'll go through it to guarantee you're 100% test ready. Go to the introduction first, so you've got a really good understanding of what's expected in the Theory Test and how to go through the course. There are 14 different Theory Test topics. Let me show you what's in the Accidents topic. You can download and print off a worksheet to fill in if you want to. You can fill it in while you're watching the video tutorials. Then you can listen to a fact list before you go and have a go at all of the official DVSA practice questions for that topic. When you've got all of the questions correct, have a go at the mock test for that topic. And when you get 10 out of 10 in the mock test, move on to the next topic and go through all of the topics in the same way so that by the time you get to the case studies and the full mock tests, you'll find answering the questions easy. So I've just spotted a question there. Where, where is that? If I buy the course now, will I have enough time? My theory is Monday. Um, I don't know, Bailey Abbey, how much time in the day that you've got, but I do know a lot of people have done the course in a week, an awful lot of people. Um, some people have done some of the course over a weekend. I know one person that's done the whole course over four days. Um, so I would say yes, but I don't know if you work 12, 13, 14 hours a day. I don't, I don't know what time you have available, but I would say that you have got enough time. If Anything I've said tonight has helped you to learn something, you know you can learn lots of bits and pieces in my course. So it, it's well worth in, investing in it. Um, 
Molly Browning. That's awesome news. Um, and it's only it's only the it's only the price of one single one hour driving lesson. That's all you pay for it. So you have to consider it. Ha click on the link now while I'm live because the link won't be there when I'm not live. Um, and, and you can decide um, at some point whether you want to invest that time in preparing and making sure you do pass it on your first attempt because it's very frustrating to to go and have to take it again and again and again. Make sure you follow me on TikTok. Make sure you follow me on YouTube. You can um, subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the pinned link. Um, now go to your course. If you're on my course, go to your course, practice a few questions on your own would be good. Um, practice a handful of hazard perception clips will be awesome as well for you. Um, but don't do too much. Don't do too much at once. Um, my next live lesson, when is it? So I'll be live tomorrow at nine. I'll be live tomorrow at four and I'll be live tomorrow at half past six. OK, thank you, Melanie. Give me a crown. <laughs> so nine o'clock tomorrow morning for a lesson, four o'clock to go through questions in my app and half past six to do a lesson uh, um, questions just like this one. Is the course for ADI too? Um, it, no, I, I am doing, I'm still building my ADI course but I'm helping a lot of ADIs at the moment. I'm helping a lot of ADIs because I've given them this course or the signed up for this course and the hazard perception course. And then I will give you all the, um, the ADI questions as well. Um, so that's how I'm helping ADIs. So if you want to sign up for this course, and you're an ADI, you're, you're, a, you're a trainee driving instructor, sign up and then get in touch with me and say, Annie, give me all the, the um, questions and I'll tell you exactly how to go through the courses um, to pass your ADI test. I've realised there are new questions in the actual theory test and I've never seen those questions. Thank you, just purchased MKKK, that's awesome. I'll pin it there for you. Like I say, I'm helping numerous um, people who are um, trainee lorry drivers and trainee driving instructors and, and motorbike riders. Even though I've not got a course officially for those people yet, I can help you. Um, so, still got 260 people on here. I so want to stay on, but I've got to go and have my tea. Uh, so thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you've learned something. I hope I've helped. That's what I'm here for. My name is Annie and I'm making theory easy for you. I'll see you again tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon at four or tomorrow evening at half past six. All my lives this week will go on. I will bushy a typical Jamaican tea I'm having tonight, rice and peas and ackee and saltfish. <laughs> OK, um, so. Um, so, so yeah, uh, all these lives will be on my YouTube channel. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the link below. Sign up for my course by clicking on the link below uh, and I'll keep on helping you guys. Thanks for joining me. See you again soon. Bye.